G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another trade related video. As we approach the end of the season, obviously the trade stuff's starting to hot up. A lot of uncontracted players and even some contracted players that we're going to talk about in this video who are going to potentially find new clubs at the end of the season. In today's video, I've decided to take a look at nine or 10 players who may be considered somewhat of a high value trade target for opposition clubs this year. Due to various circumstances, these players are either out of favor at their club or perhaps may look look for more opportunity at a different one. And these types of recruits can prove to be quite valuable pickups for teams in the trade period. So I've got nine names for you. We're gonna go through each name and discuss how these players might find their way to a new club this year. As always guys, we are sponsored by manscaped.com. So if you have any male grooming needs, which you probably do, you can head to manscaped.com and enjoy 20% off on anything that you buy. Just use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. If you're looking for a tool to get your body shaving done quickly and easily, look no further than the Lawnmower 4.0. It's ceramic bladed. The point of that is to help reduce grooming accidents. It's waterproof. You can use it in the shower, which is the best place to do it. It's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch half of Oppenheimer in there. God, that was a weird thing to say. But they've got heaps of other stuff as well, including a nose and ear hair trimmer, colognes, all that jazz. So enjoy 20% off with the code TRUEFOOTY20. So like I said, we're going to talk through about nine names in this video of players who are a little bit out of favor at their current club and might make their way to a new one. And the first name I've got for you is Adam Tomlinson of the Melbourne Footy Club, who obviously has spent the vast majority of his career at GWS, moved to Melbourne a number of years ago. And since then, he's found himself out of favor. He's played a number of roles over the course of his career. He was drafted as a key forward, if I'm not mistaken. Spent a bit of time on the wing, bit of a key defender as well. There was actually talk of him moving clubs, specifically to the Western Bulldogs, if I remember correctly, in last year's trade period, even though he had two years left re remaining on his contract, but he's decided to stick around at the Demons. But things haven't really gotten much better for him this year, managing just the seven games. He's obviously playing behind Harrison Petty, Jake Lever, Stephen May. So at this point of his career, you know, he's uh, probably about 29, I think. This is not the part of his career he wants to be spent sitting on the sidelines. So I think a move from Adam Tomlinson to a different club this year could be on the cards. And again, the Western Bulldogs who may need some reassurance in the back half, particularly a taller type defender may be suitable for his services as well. This one will happen, I think, not necessarily to the Bulldogs, but I think they still remain a good candidate for it. But I'd be surprised if Adam Tomlinson is still at the Demons next year. The next one is Massimo D'Ambrosio from Essendon, who was a mid-season pickup a couple of years ago and now finds himself potentially on the outer. And I must admit, I'm sort of getting this a little bit from Callum Toomey, who suggests that other clubs are circling for D'Ambrosio. Hasn't set the world on fire. There was a lot of interest in him in the mid-season draft. He has played 16 games for Essendon, but he's played eight of them this year and was subbed off or the sub in five of those games. So not really getting a good look in at AFL level. And Toomey does suggest there is some outside noise about potentially acquiring him from another club. The thing about D'Ambrosio is that he is a fast, uh, smaller built, quick rebounder off the halfback flank. And I think in the modern game, there will be an appetite from other clubs, even if he's relatively unproven, that they may look at him as a good, valuable, cheap pickup. He did have a 27 disposal game at AFL level in round two. So he showed that at AFL level, he can actually find the footy. It just may be a change of circumstance might be right for young Massimo. So I could see him fighting a new club this offseason. Then there is Liam Henry from the Fremantle Footy Club who has been talked about a little bit in the media circles this year as being a potential trade option for opposition clubs. He is West Australian, obviously playing for a West Australian club. He was pick nine in the 2019 draft. He's taken a little bit longer to come on by comparison to Caleb Sorong and Hayden Young who were taking the two picks before him at the same club. And potentially he's been a bit of a victim of comparison there because he has taken a little bit longer to come on at AFL level. But we have seen some pretty good growth for him over the course of this season. He's averaging 20 possessions, which is double what he was averaging last year at AFL level. He had a game this year where he had 33, backed that up with 32 the next game. Peter Bell actually came out and commented on his contract situation. Then he, he actually more or less said, considering that Liam Henry doesn't have a contract right now, he understands why there would be a bit of a contemplation by Henry to consider playing somewhere else, which is an interesting thing to say. It's almost kind of like embracing the possibility that Henry might request a trade. Mitch Cleary came out and suggested that the Western Bulldogs, Melbourne and St Kilda might be the three 
three clubs that are most interested in him. We'll have to wait and see on that one because uh, if Liam Henry continues to improve, he might find himself happy to stay at Fremantle if he's getting a regular game, but we'll see by the end of the season. The next one is Dylan Stevens from the Sydney Swans, who is pick five in the 2019 draft. So we're talking about a former top five pick here. And this is not the first time we talked about him as a potential trade target for an opposition club. He does come from South Australia. It's reported by it to me that you know, he's out of contract at the end of the year. Clubs are monitoring the situation. At the start of the year, the Swans did start talks with him to start a new contract. And apparently when he fell out of the side, understandably, he didn't want to sign an extension because obviously that's when his value would be the lowest. It's not like he's getting no opportunity. He played 15 games last year in a side that obviously made it to the grand final. Started this year well as well, playing the first seven games, but he's only played two since. So just nine games this year out of a possible 19. And you think at this stage of his career, if he's not getting a regular look in as a midfielder at the Swans, then he's a prime candidate to be a good value pickup for an opposition club. Where does he go? I don't necessarily believe he'll defect back to South Australia, but I'd imagine he's more likely to go wherever he gets, you know, the best deal and the best opportunity to play football. He's a fast, skillful outside midfielder. There's definitely going to be an appetite for him somewhere in the league. The next player I want to talk about is Sam Flanders, who is an interesting one. Obviously, uh, he's a midfielder now at the Gold Coast Sun, sort of drafted as a forward midfielder. Pick 11, I think, in the 2019 draft. I remember it uh, specifically because Gold Coast traded up to get Sam Flanders specifically in the draft, and he took a little bit longer to come on. Obviously, Gold Coast have had a raft of particularly 2019 draftees that have performed pretty strongly, and Flanders took a little bit longer, which is kind of a common thread of uh, all the players in this video. Had a really promising preseason. He was putting up solid numbers. People were getting him into their fantasy sides. And then in round three, he had a knee injury and naturally had to work his way back in through the VFL. But in the last five games, he's put together his five best possession winning games at AFL level. This included a run of 27, 27, 24 in the last two weeks, 33 and 32. When asked about his form, Flanders said that uh, in the past, he was kind of hanging off contests. And now he's playing with a little bit more license and a little bit more trust from his teammates to go and win his own ball. So he's getting a bit more contested footy. He's feeling confident, clearly. He's had a really, really good run of form. And when asked about his contract, he said, it's a good question. I'm pretty happy just taking it week by week. So you could read that two ways. Taking it week by week makes sense because he is starting to increase his contract value. It also sounds very non-committal to the club that you're playing for. So this one is a wait and see, but I think whoever ends up with Sam Flanders, he's good enough to improve their squad. Then we'll talk about Port Adelaide's Tom Cleary, the key defensive player. He's contracted to the end of 2025 and uh, obviously a trade would need to happen for him to get to another club and he hasn't had a great year I think he played one senior game this year been ruled out for the year with a back injury he's also 29 but you know there's always an appetite for key position players and we do know there's a number of teams across the league right now who probably do have a need for a key defensive player particularly if they're competing for a premiership soon he's a solid player he's not necessarily a gun by any stretch but he is probably capable of coming in at least being depth if not best 22 depending on the club that he goes to. Some of the clubs that need key defenders will be, you know, Essendon have a big need for a key defender, hence their interest in Mackay. The Swans obviously have been defensively ravaged in recent times. North Melbourne might lose Mackay and therefore need an experienced backup. Dare I say even West Coast if they lose Barras, which I have no idea if that's going to happen. So there's a few different reasons why clubs would need a key defender. I think Port are still interested in Radigalia as well, so that may be a key component here. If they get Radigalia, Cleary may find his way to another club. Then we've got Matthew Crouch, which was another interesting one. I think famously last year it was reported that at the end of his contract, which was still had another year at the time, Adelaide had basically told him he wouldn't be getting another contract past that. As I record this video, he's come into the AFL side in the last two games and put in two really solid performances, particularly against Port Adelaide in their most recent win. He had 32 disposals. His efficiency was 91%. 12 tackles, 6 clearances, 7 inside 50s, 10 score involvements. So those are really, really good numbers contributing to a very, very good win for his club. So there is a chance, potentially, Matthew Crouch has regained a little bit of favor at the Adelaide Crows. He is 28 and, you know, potentially, I feel like the game in recent times has moved past the big-bodied, slow inside midfielder who is a clearance bull. But that doesn't mean that Matthew Crouch won't have some sort of value to a team. It may or may not be Adelaide. We will see. He's been previously linked to the Gold Coast Suns. I don't think clearances are a real issue for the Suns. So we'll see what happens. I do think clearly by his most recent performance, he's good enough to be on an AFL list. You know, I look at someone like a North Melbourne and it's easy to link players like this to some 
some of the worst clubs. But, you know, they're still uncertain about, uh, you know, Zeebel's retiring. Ben Cunnington is the other one. Uh, we're unclear on what the future holds for him. So does Matthew Crouch sort of add a bit of a stopgap there? You could even make the case someone like Geelong, who's obviously still in their premiership window, about to have a bunch of retirees. Not necessarily a strong clearance team at the moment. I don't know. There's options for Matt Crouch, particularly if he ends the season the way he's currently playing. The eighth player on this list is Jack Petrocelli from the West Coast Eagles. And I'm kind of including him here because as an Eagles fan, I feel like I'm a little bit closer to his situation and really seen the growth that Jack Petrocelli has put in on the footy field this year. He's played 69 games. He's out of contract and he's Victorian, and he's playing in a rubbish side that probably has no prospects for finals in the next few years. I think we've seen really solid growth from Petrocelli. You know, when he started his career, he was a bit of a wiry, athletic forward slash outside mid. But this year, more so than any other previous year, we've seen the evolution of him playing like an actual footballer. He showed really good versatility this year. The Eagles have used him as a small forward. He's played a roll half halfback. He started playing in the midfield recently, won five clearances against North Melbourne. I'd imagine there's several of you watching this video right now who probably haven't seen Jack Bretschicelli play in a little while. But personally, I think there's good value there. He'd be really cheap. He's Victorian, may want to go home, may not want to stick around for the rebuild. Part of me thinks that Jack Petrocelli may end up at a different club this offseason, and I have a feeling that he is going to go to another club and torch us every time he plays us. But he's always been given every opportunity to play when he's been fit, so whatever club does take him on, I'd imagine it'd be cheap because you're also kind of inheriting a bad run of uh, hamstring injuries in his past. That being said, for the likely price, which would be very, very minimal, Jack Petrocelli could be a really valuable trade option this year. Then we'll talk a little bit about Carlton's Zach Fisher, who is actually contracted until the end of 2025, but has fallen a little bit out of favor at Carlton. It was reported a few weeks ago that there are a number of clubs circling him. In particular, they were named as North Melbourne, Hawthorne, and West Coast. North Melbourne are obviously doing everything they can to improve their squad. Same with West Coast, who um, other than the obvious WA link, probably looking for some forward half ability, probably also looking to plug a hole in the age demographic of their list. Hawthorne as well has been highlighted as a team that is obviously rebuilding, but also looking for some forward half talent in particular. It was originally reported that West Coast was linked to him. And then I think it was John Ralph came out and said that West Coast interest has cooled for whatever reason. But Carlton have been signing some big contracts lately and Zach Fisher might be a player that gets squeezed out and we know he's played 103 games of AFL level. You know what you're getting with Zach Fisher. I could see him being recruited to another club and being a best 22 player there potentially. Anyway guys, that is nine players that I think would be pretty decent, valuable pickups for opposition clubs. The valuable part obviously is linked to the fact that none of these players would cost much in terms of a trade. But let me know who I missed. Let me know in the comments section. Uh, you know, Who do you think from your club you might think might find a new home? Equally, who's a player from another club that you might be interested in um, but the criteria is that they can't be you know, an A grade player. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Do go check out that manscaped.com offer, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.